Hello, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Back to us trying to fight off the uh, German advance into Russia, which is pretty terrifying, as we take Western Europe and start rolling up Germany and fight over Alaska and all of Eastern Asia. In honor of the British doing so well, I have put together some tea, some sleepy time tea to keep us awake <laughs> during these uh, trying times. And we're going to see if we can... Get a little bit closer to wrapping this up. Germany is a tight and tough nut to crack. So we're going to keep rushing in with the Russians, getting eight infantry a turn every turn, building up the defenses we need to prevent these German tanks from steamrolling us. We cannot, and I repeat, cannot stop them from, or we cannot attack West Russia. We can't. We can't get in there and prevent that from being a thing that we we lose to them for now. What we can try and control is where else can they take? And I think we have to take the Ukraine because that allows us to blow up a tank. That's a, that's a good trade for us. I also think we want to take Archangel because that's lightly defended. And then Evenki is another good option for us. The question is, with, you know, all of these ground troops, okay, 12 infantry, the equivalent of 10 tanks, and three more tanks that could blitz through, I think we cannot defend the caucus. I think we need to leave the caucus. Because they have 12 men and 12 or 13 tanks. So I think what we need to do is take 10 men here, run them into the caucus, or run them into Russia, run these men into Russia, and basically deploy everything in Russia. Hope we blow up a few more of his tanks and these these Japanese infantry. Oh, in fact, we'll take Yakut if it's, if it's free. Just slow down that advance a little bit farther. And yeah, and then we just hope, and then we land everything in Russia. We lose caucus, hopefully just for a turn. Had I realized I was making this decision, I probably would have built some artillery. But, uh, you know, trying times, man. Trying, trying times. Uh, and we, we were successful in our combats. We lost a handful of infantry to them. But there's no way, I don't think, that he can take Russia proper. Him taking the caucus is pretty devilish. Pretty devilish indeed. But if that means that he starts losing most of Europe to us, that's, a, that's something I'm willing to take. Okay, we lost Western Europe decisively, as discussed. Ooh, three men in a tank. That's kind of... That's a sore spot for him. Meanwhile, he brought his army back. It's... Still able to retake the caucus with whatever the Russians use, but we can probably blow up Archangel or something. British production. 14 men. That's 8 in the UK and 6 in Western Europe. Don't mind if I do. Uh, we're going to send our 4 transports back because we do not need as many as we have. We don't need all 5, rather. Uh... We've got to take Eastern Europe and deploy into Western Europe. It's got 30 infantry. I mean, that's that's enough to take Western Europe, I have no doubt. The real, the question for me is just, could I send two tanks at Archangel? And, and send four planes at Archangel. That means none of the British planes would make it back to Western Europe. But it's going to have so much infantry there, I don't think the Germans could ever take it now. So this allows us to hit the Germans and kill three things, so three infantry...
it allows us to kill three infantry, and then there's a one half chance that one of our tanks survives. One, two. If not, we have to land everything in Corellia. Oh, that's not a good idea. It's not, not, not a good idea. So instead, I think we don't even need the plane for Eastern Europe, though, is the funny thing. Funny and, like, just happens to be a fun fact. Because the battleship and the cruiser will add together to make a bombard, but we'll put the plane in anyway. Why not? And uh, we still have that Kenyan dude just hanging out in Kenya. And I think that's fine. I think we're going to take this one attack. He's he's dead before the battle begins. We bring our plane back. Uh, done. And then, yeah. And then we drop six guys here and eight guys there. Wow. That's a lot of British dudes. It's a lot of British dudes. Now, remember, I mentioned Southern Europe. And then you may have noticed that I did not take Southern Europe. Oh, he's killing us. He's killing us in all kinds of places. I'll tell you about Southern Europe in a minute. We lost Alaska, Kazakh, Yakut. We did fight and survive in Novobrsk. And then he's just deploying so much stuff. Oh, look at all these Japanese tanks. Ah! I don't know what we do <laughs> about that. That's a lot. It's a lot of tanks. Uh. Well, let's focus on the Americans. The Americans will have two convoys in range if we don't buy any more. So, of course, we need to buy more. Yes. Yes, we do. We're going to get at least two more. Does that mean frig? Can we fill two more? Oh my god. Eight infantry, okay. The The United States is pretty broke right now, to be honest. But if they want to keep fighting us for Alaska, we will continue to oblige. Uh, all of you guys get on the boats. All of you guys just go here for a second while we swap positions. Then you can continue dropping. Well, actually, ugh, rats. I should always get these guys out of the UK first. This is such a weird shipping operation. Oh my god. Just convoys just strewn across the Atlantic haphazardly everywhere. Thank god. It's out of their bomber's range. We'll put our destroyer there just in case. There is a Japanese fleet hovering, just just waiting for an opening. But if they came close, that the yeah, American fighters would be enough to to shun them. Here's the thing: I think the British have built up a tall enough stack that I can take everything into Southern Europe. You know, I think that forces... I think we'll lose this American army to German tanks and fighters and bombers and what have you. But that will deplete the Germans from the Russian territory, basically, for the rest of the game. It'll be their last huzzah. Meanwhile, we are going to continue this retreat into Anglo-Egypt as the Japanese completely overwhelm us. Yikes. I mean, we could use some of these American fighters in different places. <sighs> we could, couldn't we? But where? How? Why? Think, Matt! No, I don't, th I don't think... I was thinking about, can we get over here with these planes and blow up these archangel things? But no, we want to keep... Western Europe. We built a factory there. We need to make sure it stays intact. Um, units are going there. Units here. So many convoys. It's such a waste. This is insane. But I think we're going to be able to beat them. Battle for Alaska. 
the Americans are losing some dudes, the Japanese are losing some dudes, the Americans are losing some dudes, and we got in. With one man left. And then Southern Europe? We lost three men, and then they lost everything. Well, we lost a fourth man. Whew! That was a great battle for us. Those Americans are so dead. <laughs> oh my god, they're dead. Here's the thing, though. If the Germans attack Southern Europe, will they have enough to defend Germany? I don't know. I'm not sure. Don't get me wrong. We could have attacked Germany this turn. But 32 infantry, like the AI has been very proactive in defending it. But Germany's getting very encircled now. They have a, they've been forcing the Russians back and back and back. But they've given up so much land that I don't think it's going to work out for them. Ugh, American non-combat. Oh, the bomber needs to move back to the United States. We are the United States. Okay, okay. Opa, opa. Eight more infantry on the boats. Americans collecting tons of money. And there we go. That's another episode done. Russia is again encircled. They have a little outlier here thanks to the British continuously bringing back Kareliev just for a little bit of income. But they're not. They're running on just fumes. I think we're taking back caucuses next turn, though, but you'll have to see it next episode.